Alright, hi guys, this is Podman26, uh, back to bring you another episode of, uh, Victoria 2, A House Divided, Confederate States of America Campaign. Yes, I know it's been a long time since I did a video, and I apologize for this, I'm an asshole, you know, curse me out on it, call me out on it, it's fine, I understand it's my fault. So, I'm looking back at this, and I'm like, oh, you know, okay, so I, I got, like, this stuff going on here, and then that stuff there, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I'm supposed to, like, take over Mexico and stuff. Well, not take over, but, see, I read the series of books by Harry Turtle Dove. Well, I'm actually not even done with the series, but it's basically if the South had won the Civil War, what would happen? So what happens next in that series of books is uh, they buy... Uh, the provinces or states in this game of Chihuahua and Sonora, which is this. So, why do they do this? They do it to get a Pacific coast, to get you know a coastline on the Pacific, and build a you know transatlantic Pacific railway like the United States does in history, and the United States obviously does that in a series of books too, but now the Confederate States can do it. And so what happens is that sparks a whole second Mexican war, is it, as it's called, where the United States says, heck no, you can't do that, so they declare, declare war on the Confederate States to prevent them from taking Chihuahua and Sonora, but the Confederate States wins that again. So they win two wars in a row. Then it leads on to World War One, World War Two, and I'm not going to spoil that, but that's not the point. So, thinking about that strategy, I'm saying, you know, I could probably do the same thing, just take Chihuahua and Sonora. Now, I want to see something. Is there, like, a state map mode? There's a region map mode, which is pretty much exactly the same. Okay, yeah, it's exactly the same. So, Chihuahua is the, these provinces, and Sonora are these provinces. That would be nice to take, you know. So I wouldn't want Chihuahua in like Durango, although actually Durango is a nice uh, state, thinking about it. But yeah, I'm just going to stick to the, the book series way because no reason really, just I'm going to. So Chihuahua and Sonora. So in order to do that, I will use the new feature introduced in A House Divided called, uh, I forget what it's called, let me, Justify War. So pr you produce a justification for war. So it costs us one point out of our 4.7 diplomatic points, which, so that's nothing. So here's what you do. You click in your country, click diplomacy, click justify war. Now you can choose any of these um, war goals to justify. So in my case, I'm going to add acquire state. which So manufacture a justification for declaring war with the acquire state war goal. This will take roughly 333 days. And if we are detected early, the maximum amount of infamy we can acquire is 11.0. So previously what would happen is you could declare war on a nation without a war goal. Which you can't do anymore. You need a war goal to declare war on a nation. But you could do it before before the house divided expansion. And um, when you would add a war goal and then uh, you know win the war and get your goal, you would gain that infamy right away. So in this case, you'd gain 11 infamy right away if you didn't already have that, like, Cass's belly uh, through a, an event or a mission or whatever, you know, whatever. So you, you know, you you would just gain an infamy. And infamy in this game, it's the same for everyone. So it's, it's a max of 25. I mean, as far as I know, it's a max of 25. And you only lose about 10 each month or something. Not 10. Point one zero. I... I always leave out that decimal, but 0 0.10. So you lose 0 0.1 every month. So that will take you a long ass time to get rid of your infamy. Let's just put it that way, I'm not even going to go through the math. But here, you can now justify a war, so you can create a Cass's Belly, which you have to now, and potentially get zero infamy for what you want to do. Now, here's how it works. It takes you 333 days to justify this war goal. Let's just say, if, you know, in this case, it could be longer, it could be, you know, shorter. It depends on what's going on in everything in your country, whatever. If I'm caught day one justifying this war goal, it's like a random chance. I'm not really sure if there are any modifiers for that, but it's a random chance. If I'm caught day one, 
I will gain 11 infamy right off the bat. Without even going to war or anything, I'm just gonna gain 11 infamy. But here's the good side. If I'm not caught at all, I will get zero infamy, and then when I go to war with Mexico and take over Chihuahua, I will still have zero infamy. Because I have, it's justified, acquire state. If I'm caught 120 days in, I'll gain, you know, a certain amount of infamy. I won't gain 11, but I won't gain zero. I'll gain, you know, a proportion to the amount of days left and the amount of days that have gone by. You know, it's some weird math. I'm not, you know, it's not, it's math, whatever, just whatever. So, you will gain potentially less infamy from doing it this way, which is very nice of them, because infamy was a huge problem in the before this expansion, where you would really just have so much infamy and there's nothing you could do about it. So, in this case, I'm going to justify a war for acquired state against Mexico. I'm going to do it now, because once the civil war is over, I want to have it ready to just declare war on Mexico right away. Plus, if I do it now and I get caught early on, I could bring my infamy down a little bit through war. I mean, your infamy goes down less. It goes down, I think, 0 0.03, but it still goes down a little bit. So I want to just, you know, get rid of that infamy as quickly as possible. And then as soon as my, my w w civil war is over and hopefully I win, status quo, then, um... I'll just declare war on Mexico, because Mexico has horrible military technology, and as I showed you earlier, the CSA has full military technology, so my troops will be vastly superior to theirs, so it doesn't even matter if they outnumber me for the most part. So I'll just go to war with Mexico, take over Chihuahua, and then in the middle of a war, you can actually justify another war goal, so I'll justify acquire state again, and then get Chihuahua and Sonora, and that'll basically require me to take over all of Mexico, which shouldn't be that hard hopefully because of my advanced military tech. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna do that, justify that war goal, hit that, go back to my wars, see what's what, and I just put the speed up to like three, and uh, play on. So what I've noticed is here in Huntington I have this 14,000 army, Army of the Shenandoah, no longer led by Sunwell Jackson, God bless his heart, bless his soul, you know, he's kinda dead now, but now we got Jesse Pender, who, oh, he's actually a, he's actually a good general. Not bad at all. Attack plus three per attack plus three morale plus point bleh, plus one point eight percent organization plus one point three percent and speed plus forty percent. So yeah, he's pretty good. But here I got Stonewall. Uh, yeah, Stone, Robert E. Lee. Fuck, I'm sorry. Robert E. Lee waiting in the wings to help support this defense once he gets attacked by this huge army and this huge army. So thirty-six thousand. Actually, 34,000 and um, 20, 28,000. 28, so 14 plus 28, it's not exactly the same, but I'm hoping that this huge mountainous terrain, because look, this is... Oh, sorry, in Europa, but this is mountains, so my defense will be higher and it'll be a lot easier for me to win, hopefully. And if all goes wrong, then I'll bring in the Norfolk garrison, or just retreat. Alright, so, I'm gonna unpause and see what's what. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! Alright, so you see this? Our war, our justification against uh, Mexico was detected extremely early on. So like I said, you will get pretty much full infamy. So I got 10.9, 10.96 to be exact, to see up here. But as I said, it decreases by 0.03 because I'm in war. If I was at peace, it would decrease by 0.10. So, you know, infamy is not that bad as long as you're under your limit. Although if you get like to, into the 20s range, because the limit is 25. If you get into the 20s range, you might have some problems with other nations and whatnot. But that's all right. I think, I think we'll survive that. But actually, to be a huge dick, uh, I'm going to do it again as soon as I can. So February 19th, which is in uh, 13 days. So as soon as I can, I'm going to do it again. And uh, hopefully just, you know, destroy them. Uh, just get two war goals up. Oh, there we go. I'm going to attack by the first army. So I'm just going to move that in. And they actually stopped. They stopped. So that army of uh, 28,000 decided to not fight me, so now they're just, I'm gonna win here at Huntington. And there you go, I won at Huntington. The US took uh, higher casualties than I did. And um, 
I'm going to, oh, I'm not going to pursue because they're going into this province. Uh, yeah, province. So actually, I'm just going to go to Wheeling and uh, siege that, or occupy it in this case. In this game, it's called Occupation. Well, actually, I could go into Roanoke and prevent this army from doing anything. That's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Roanoke. And uh, just see what's what. Now, hold on. I'm beginning to occupy Talaheka or whatever. Talekwa. Yes, Talekwa. Wait, this is an army of all infantry? Oh, yeah, it is. Alright, so I'm going to move these guys up here to fight the uh, U.S. sucking army at Oklahoma City because they're 20,000 and I'm 24,000. Hopefully, I can win that battle. So I'm attacking the enemy in Roanoke, let's not miss this battle. I won the occupation of Huntington, so see, because I was able to defend it, I've now won the occupation. So let's just quickly see what is the war score. So the war score is negative 3, which means that it's going in my favor. If it's negative, it means the defender's winning. If it's positive, it means the attacker's winning. And in this case, the north is the attacker. So, better than not, the USA is also the f greatest power in the world. That kind of sucks. For me, anyway. They beat out the United Kingdom through pure military score, but, alright, whatever, we'll see what happens, um, so yes, I'm currently winning the war, and uh, I just want to see something, if I were to propose peace, status quo, they would not accept this offer, okay, eventually they, they will accept that offer, I just have to win a few more battles, so, back to Mexico, because I noticed it's past February 19th, uh, Alright, see I'm an idiot. So remember I said it takes 333 days to justify a war? Oh yeah, so there you go. Pro, if you're pro-military, it takes it gives you a plus 20% modifier to justifying the war. So it, link, it shortens the time. If you're jingoism, I'm sure that's even shorter. And if you're anti-military or pacifism, then it's even longer. So I have to wait for this justification to finish. Then I can justify another gas belly, another war goal. So I'm going to wait for that to finish right now. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna win this battle. Marietta. Oh no, that's Marletta. No, that's Marietta. It looks like an L, alright, my bad. Um, I'm gonna try to attack these guys. And see what's what. The 3000 is gonna be able to see. Oh! Shoot! Uh, I'm gonna retreat. Uh, as soon as I can. I have 10 days. So I'm going to retreat now, because I'm not fighting this battle. I'm going to retreat to Greenville. Now, I did inflict more casualties, so even though that was a loss, it's kind of a victory, but it is a loss. All right, I'll accept that's a loss. Now, I'm trying to take Hagerstown with this Norfolk Garrison. It, it might happen. So here I won the Battle of Roanoke. Very small casualties, only 704 on my side. 7,000 on their side. So, already I can expect their war score to be a lot. It's negative 4 now, so... They're kind of losing a little. Now the problem is, I, I'm i taking attrition at Roanoke because its supply limit is 18 and this is 24. They need supply limit of 24 minimum. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move these guys to Sun to reinforce. So these guys are at Greenville, they're just gonna, I'm just gonna let them sit there. Uh, my army of the Mississippi is fighting and they are winning. That's good. Okay, okay. So in Tennessee, remember I set the national uh, focus to encourage clergymen? Well, it's not 2%. And 2% is, uh, is pretty much ideally what you want for your nation. That's what it says anyway. It's 2% is optimal for research points. So since it, since it is at 2%, I'm gonna take off this national focus. Go to my uh, population screen. Find the next highest uh, state, which is North Carolina. Which, no, it's, okay, yes, so it's North Carolina. I could just do it from that menu, but I wanna show you guys something. I have 15 seconds. So here in this game, 
North, uh, South Carolina isn't its own state. They decided to make it South Carolina and Georgia into one state, which is a little annoying, but I guess just because they don't have enough provinces in North Carolina, they just decided to do that. I mean, South Carolina, they just decided to do that, because here you have Atlanta, Georgia. And then it's, is Augusta in South Carolina or in Georgia? I think it's in Georgia, but I'm not sure on that. So, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you know, whatever. So here's North Carolina. It's my third highest populated state. And I'm going to encourage clergymen there. And as you can see, in North Carolina, is 1.55%. In uh, Georgia, which is another st this state, so I'm encouraging it there. Uh, clergymen there, it's 1.62%. So when they, when they both reach uh, about 2%, I'm going to stop that. So I'm going to end this episode right now, and then I'll come back later, alright? Pop in 269